Hi, welcome to our video series on men's health hormones. I mean, I just can't help it. It makes me want to go when I look at this. We're going to talk about androgens. Now, that's a big group of hormones, men's sex characteristic hormones, but we're going to specifically go after testosterone. So throughout the presentation, you'll hear me talk about androgens and testosterone, and our focus is predominantly on testosterone. Now, it's not just for males. Testosterone is also present in females. See, we produce this precursor of testosterone. So it's not actually testosterone, but it's a precursor of testosterone in our adrenal cortex and our ovaries. Now, it's 10 to 40 times less testosterone than males, but we still produce the precursor in our ovaries and our adrenal cortex. So a decrease in testosterone production happens after menopause. So for female clients, we know that we produce a precursor of testosterone, comes from our adrenal cortex and our ovaries. We have 10 to 40 times less testosterone than males. And eventually we have a decrease in testosterone production after menopause. Okay, let's look at testosterone in males. Now the testicles are primarily make the testosterone in the Leydig cells. So females make it in the adrenal cortex and the ovaries. Males make it predominantly in the testicles or the Leydig cells of the testicles. Now there's a weaker testosterone in males that comes from the adrenal gland and that goes into the plasma. Now there's a connection. Look, the females in their ovaries and the adrenal cortex, the males, testicles, and also their adrenal glands. So look for those similarities when you're studying pharmacology or any nursing concept to help your brain kind of chunk big pieces of information. Now moving on in the male column, their levels decline and by the age of 80, it's at 50%. I bet you probably could already guess at age 17, that's when they hit their peak. So when you're thinking about the levels, we know that most hormone levels decline over age. Remember the female levels also decline after menopause, but with males, they hit their peak at 17, they gradually decline over their lifetime, and it's about 50% by the age of 80 years. So testosterone levels promote changes at puberty. That's really important. So put a star by that, because this makes some significant changes in your bones and definitely in the rest of your body. Testosterone levels get higher at puberty and they cause some pretty significant changes in the body. Okay, so we're gonna look at the role of testosterone in men. We told you that testosterone exists both in men and women, but we're gonna focus predominantly on testosterone in men. First of all, it increases bone density. It also controls fat distribution. It helps with muscle strength and mass. It has facial and body hair. It also helps with red blood cell production. Now getting a little more personal, it also deals with sex drive and sperm production. So look at this slide before we go on. The role of testosterone is pretty significant in men. This hormone plays with lots of different processes in the body. Now if you wanna think head to toe, Oh, look, we've got facial and body hair, bone density, muscle strength, fat distribution, red blood cells, and then the sex drive and sperm production. So one way that you can study this is think of things head to toe. Okay, so here's a question for you. Why do men have a higher hematocrit than women? Think about what we just talked about. Why do men have a higher hematocrit than women? The answer is testosterone. Testosterone promotes the synthesis of erythropoietin. Well, how does that help? Erythropoietin is a hormone that acts on your bone marrow, and that's what stimulates the red blood cell production. So because men have higher levels of testosterone, remember than women, women have 10 to 40 times less, men have higher levels of testosterone compared to the women, that's why they have higher hematocrits. So let's roll through that one more time. The reason men have higher hematocrits is because they have more testosterone, which promotes the synthesis of more erythropoietin. More erythropoietin means more red blood cells. A higher level of red blood cells equals a higher hematocrit. So next time you look at lab work, look at the normal values for hemoglobin and hematocrit and the differences between men and women. 
Now we have therapeutic uses for this hormone in both males and females. The one that's approved is hypogonadism. This would be in male patients that are not producing enough testosterone. Now there's some off-label uses for this. We can use it for the relief of menopausal symptoms with women. Okay, stop for a minute. Why would we use, why would we even consider using that testosterone for women? Well, because in menopause, a woman's testosterone level really starts to drop off, and use of testosterone can help with some of the side effects and the adverse effects women feel during menopause. Now, there's also an off-label use for anemias. Now, based on what we have just discussed, why do you think someone might consider using testosterone for an off-label use to treat anemias? Anemia means low red blood cell count, and you know that testosterone synthesizes, promotes that synthesis of erythropoietin, which stimulates your bone marrow to make red blood cells. That's why it's considered for an off-label use to treat anemias. Okay, let's try another question. Why would a patient receiving testosterone have an increased risk of stroke or MI? This one is a little trickier. Think back about what you already know about testosterone in the body and how would that put me at an increased risk of a stroke or an MI? Well, it's that erythropoietin again, because when you have more testosterone, or you've got more erythropoietin, which means that you have increased amounts of red blood cells. That could increase your risk of clots or thrombosis. And a clot or a thrombosis can lead to a stroke or an MI. So that's why somebody receiving testosterone does have an increased risk of having a stroke or an MI.